What's up, guys? It's Ryan again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button up here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are on Chapter 3 in our series of the SSI Deep Diver Program. And we really hope this video and this entire series helps prepare you for your final exam. That being said, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out and make a deep dive. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI deep diving instructor just so that you're being safe while deep diving. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter three. Now, starting out in chapter three, we're going to talk about your pre-dive procedures. And in chapter two, we talked about planning your dive and diving your plan. Well, you want to do that with your buddy. Just because you can do a gas management plan doesn't necessarily mean that your buddy's going to have, say, the same gas management. So you want to make sure that you're planning your dive safely with your buddy. And of course, whatever your plan is going to be, you're going to dive to, say, the leaser diver's experience level or to, say, whoever has the highest air consumption rate as well. Now, once you've done that, you want to make sure you do a proper pre-dive safety check. You and your buddy's going to make sure you have all your equipment, all his or her equipment, and that it's in proper working order. Both of you go through each other's gear to make sure it's working properly and that both of you can manipulate it, say, during an emergency. Once you've done that, you want to prep your dive site and prepare for the dive. Now, typically speaking, you always want to do a weight test. One thing that a lot of people miss understand is I'm properly weighted at the surface, but I may not be properly weighted at depth. As your suit compresses at depth, you may actually become a little heavy. So you want to make sure that you're not too heavy, that you can't swim up during an emergency. So always do a proper weight test at the surface prior to making your descent. Now, the next part of chapter three that we're going to look at, of course, is the descent. And just prior to your descent, you want to make sure that you and your buddy orient yourself to, say, the surface, whether it's a boat or a directional heading or even just a shoreline. You want to make sure that you can always find your exit point once you get back to the surface. Now that we've done that, we're going to make a slow, safe descent, making sure that we equalize and that we maintain neutral buoyancy all the way down. We never want to just drop like a rock because we may run the risk of, say, rupturing our eardrum. So you and your Buddy, you want to make a slow, safe descent, equalizing all the way down and maintaining proper trim and buoyancy during the descent. Now that we're at depth, the actual diving itself is really no different than, say, shallow dives that you would do on a nice warm reef or a pretty wreck. However, one thing to consider is at deeper depths, you are going to be using more uh, gas than what you would, say, at a shallower depth. So you want to monitor your gauges more frequently. And as we've stated in previous videos, when we look at a pressure gauge, we're never looking to see how much gas we've got. We're always confirming what we already know. So from our pre-dive plan, where we talked about gas management, we're always going to confirm what the gauge says with what our actual breathing rate is. You never want to get in the habit of just saying, oh, I've got this much gas left. It's always going to be, yes, that is how much gas I've got left. Now, you also want to make sure that you can stay in contact with your buddy. It doesn't mean you've got to hold hands with them, but at deeper depths, you may not have enough time to reach them during an emergency. So make sure that you stay close enough that you can render aid. Make sure you're still oriented, whatever your compass heading was at the surface, and that way you can make a nice and safe, comfortable dive and navigate back to, say, your ascent line. Now, once you're down there, make sure you maintain proper trim and buoyancy. And we don't want to really stir up the bottom or disturb any of the wildlife when we're underwater as well. Now, to end out this chapter, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Of course, one is dealing with currents when you're at deeper depths. And there is a thing called a reverse current. This typically happens when you've got some type of object down below, such as a shipwreck, where maybe the current's going one direction on the top, but below the surface is going a different direction. And of course, with that current and, say, some type of hazard, such as a shipwreck, you may actually have an eddy or some type of strainer that you may find yourself in at those deeper depths. So if you're interested in diving in currents and stuff, check out the SSI Waves, Tides, and Currents class. This is a great course to teach you how to stay safe anytime you're dealing with, say, currents of one knot or faster when underwater. But now that we've kind of finished the dive, let's go ahead and do our ascent procedure. You always want to make sure you reserve enough gas for the ascent and for an emergency. Now, typically, we will tell you always be back at the surface around 500 PSI. I personally like to always come up with at least a third of my 
gas still on my back. Now, typically, if you got a 3,000 PSI tank, this is mean you're going to turn your dive around that 2,000 PSI mark and then make your ascent and try to be back on the surface with at least 1,000. This one-third is there for an emergencies and it's also for the ascent itself. And it's also going to be very crucial if you find yourself in a situation, say, where your buddy is low or even out of air, you and your buddy will still have at least a third of your gas supply to bring both of you up safely to the surface. Now, one final note that I do want to make here is always do a safety stop. Even if it's not required, it is added conservatism and it's going to help you bleed off a little bit of extra nitrogen at the end of your dive. And it's going to give you a great chance to kind of reminisce about the dive and to relax prior to making it back to the surface. If you remember our boat diver program that we did the review on, we talked about exiting the water and typically after a deep dive, you're going to be a little bit extra tired and you may even have extra equipment that might be a little difficult to get out of the water with. So during that safety stop, this is a great time to prepare your equipment for your exit back onto, say, the vessel or even the shoreline. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter three in our series of the SSI Deep Diver Program. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer that question the best I can. Now, we really hope this video and all the videos in this series helps prepare you for your final exam for the SSI Deep Diver Program, but please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out and make deep dives. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI Deep Diving Instructor. But until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.